Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Back to the middle duplicated tab. Reports on the left side so we can open one of the faves, the balance sheet. As it's thinking, tap into the right, reports on the left, and this time we want the P, the L, the profit loss, the income, the statement. Closing the hand boogie, I'm going to change the range from 010123 to 123 and run it. Now I've cleaned out the reports by basically just going into the transaction detail or drilling down on the reports, zooming in to each transaction and deleting the transaction in our test company file so we have a fairly clean report. You don't necessarily need to do that for this practice problem. I'm gonna tab to the left now and close the hand boogie, change the range. 010123, 123123, and run it. And let's go to the tab to the left. Now in prior presentations, we've been comparing and contrasting some of these added kind of features that are over and above just the double entry accounting system, most of which will be breaking out, say, the income statement by columns, giving us another dimension to look at, that being class tracking projects, location tracking tags, sub customers, which used to be called jobs. We've turned those on now, so they're still on. So to turn the class tracking and location tracking on, you'll recall that's in the COGS menu up top account and settings then we're down in the advanced settings and you want to go into the categories here and we've got these two toggled on basically the default settings as they are toggled on make sure that you save it before you hit done because sometimes i have noticed that i say done before i save it and it's actually not on it's off and it's quite frustrating because then the, the fields don't show up because i didn't hit the save button so make sure you hit the save button and don't just X out of it and then say done and do it properly. So we have that set up. We also know that the sub customers are linked to the customers. So if we think about the sub customers, just a quick review here, it's under uh, the sales tab and then our customers and we set up our sub customers just by number. You can see it's a sub customer because it's indented here. You can add a sub customer by just saying new customer and then you're going to make it a sub of some other customer like so. So we did that in the past and so we've got those set up. So do you want to leave without saving? I do. That's the sub customer and we know that the projects are over here on the left hand side and those are kind of like the sub customers in that when you add a project you're gonna have to add them just as an example project name needs to be tied to a customer so like with the sub customers they're tied to a customer now we've been thinking about what the data input looks like uh, as we do the data input normal data input forms are found in the plus button invoices expense forms and so on and so forth now of course we want to think about the bank feeds and just recognize where those fields will be located in the bank feeds so for example if i go into an, a normal invoice which would be in my accounting uh, cycle for billing a client then we can see that we have the location tracking up here which is this one location tracking for the entire transaction that's how location tracking works. The tags are here, so I can add tags there. And then I've got the classes, which I can add here, line by line, breaking out in the bottom portion per line instead of one location for the entire transaction. And then we've got the uh, customer that we are gonna be adding in an invoice, which will be up top, customer, and sub-customer. Okay, so that's where everything's located on an invoice. And if we look at a standard expense form, then we know that the expense form has the location tracking similarly located here. We've got the class tracking similarly located down here. We've got the tags similarly located here. And then the customers and jobs uh, are an added field here where we can assign you know, customers and jobs possibly making the item say a billable type of item 
So there we have that. Closing that out, do you want to save and close? I do. Now, when I look at these transactions on the plus button here, and I think about the bank feeds, and we have whole, a whole different course or section on bank feeds if you want to dive into how they integrate into your accounting system, but obviously that's the cash side of things. If we're pulling the information in from the bank, you're going to have increases and decreases uh, to the checking account. So when you add the bank feeds, the standard forms being used are going to be a bit like an, an expense form or check form for the decreases. Uh, and But the format will look a little bit different on the bank feeds because we're pulling it in from the bank than a standard expense form. However, when we actually record them, they'll show up as basically like an expense form decreasing the, <clears throat> the checking account. The other transaction is generally going to be a deposit, those being increases to the checking account. And so we'll enter a deposit form. Now note, uh, when we're doing a full accounting cycle on the revenue generation form, we usually don't use a deposit. We usually use an invoice if it's an accrual concept or a f an accrual system we're using or a sales receipt. But these two aren't normally what comes into the bank feeds because what comes into the bank feeds is just going to be simply the deposit uh, form generally. So, okay, so given that, we're going to go over to the bank feeds. So those are going to be located on the left-hand side, banking. And I've added just some test data so I can, I can uh, see some transactions down here in the bank feeds. Now, if you want to add test data to like, to, to, your, to, to your test file without actually connecting to the bank, you could connect to the bank or you could download transactions from your bank. Uh, or you can just make an Excel worksheet with transactions. So I just made an Excel worksheet here and it looks like this. Uh, so you can just create this if you if you would like. You need a date field, you need an amount field, you need a description, your amounts don't need to tie into my amounts exactly. But the idea is that we're gonna have increases and then decreases to the checking account. That's all the bank feeds are gonna be basically, increases and decreases to the checking account. And then we've got the description, which often includes information that allows us to pull in the customer and the vendor. It's not going to be automatic, so we're going to have to set up rules to kind of do that when we properly line up our bank feeds. But that's the general idea. Now, you can't upload it as an Excel file. You have to save it as a C as CVS, CSV, CVS file. So in any case, you, how to do that, you go to the file tab up top, save as and then browse and then instead of this being an excel file you want to make it a csv files which is a comma delimited delimited file which can open in excel but it's really just like a comma splice set of data that doesn't have any excel kind of formatting in it and then uh then you can you can go into that the the, the actual files look like this this is the excel file and this is the CSV file. If I right click on it and take a look at the properties of it, properties, then you can see it's a .csv file as opposed to this one over here. If I right click on it and say the properties, this is uh, an Excel, a .xl uh, sx file. So it's pretty easy to do that. And then you can, you know, you can upload some data into your system into the bank feeds and and do work with it. And then when you're in QuickBooks here, the way to get that data into the system is you're gonna hit, instead of a link, you just upload from the file and then you can drag your data file in here and you can tell it which account you wanna assign the uploaded data to. And here's the formats that can be used, one of them being that .csv file. Okay, so once we have data in our system, then notice all we're really going to have are going to is going to be money coming in and money going out that's what the checking account has so for example this one is going to be a money going out the description i have vendor five usually it's not going to have the name of the vendor as just the name of the vendor it might have other stuff in it as well in like the memo section 